Hello everyone, it's Lee here. Welcome back to another Junk Journal January. Um, I'm going to make another mixed media page. And the prompt for today is Pattern. And Junk Journal January is hosted by Meg from Meg Journals in collaboration with Get Messy Art. And every day you have a different prompt for helping you decide what you want to make in your junk journal or your art journal or wherever it, wherever it is that you like to be creative. So I'm doing a voiceover of this one and I've got it going a bit um, a bit faster than normal and the reason for that is this video would have been about two hours long because there's so much involved in it uh, so much backtracking and going over things so I'll um, just talk you through it and also excuse my voice I think I'm getting a cold or something I got a really sore throat so um, I may not talk as much as I normally would yay you all go I heard that okay so as usual I'm starting my collar um, the the design by collaging some music sheet or some other form of paper so music sheet in this case looks a bit like a multi-legged monster of some sort doesn't it um, another thing I want to mention is I've had a few people ask what products I'm using and I haven't been listing them because to be perfectly honest I didn't think anybody really <laughs> wanted to know but yeah I will from now onwards put a list of all my products in to my video description box and that gesso that I'm using that's just one that I picked up from our local hardware store and it's uh, the brand is Boyle so here I'm just using a trivet to push try and get some impressions in that um, gesso it didn't really work so I thought, oh, I've got this thing which is actually the end off a, a clothes peg basket. Um, I've plastered some texture paste on there and pushed that into the texture paste. And now I'm using some Distress Oxide spray to see what I come up with. But I wasn't really that impressed with the colour. It just isn't bright enough for what I'm doing here. So it'll get more things added over the top. So I tried doing a similar thing on the other side with a different colour and I think that one is Evergreen Bow. I'm pretty sure the other one was um, Stormy Sky but I will list that in the description box. So this is acrylic paint. I've mixed red and yellow together and I'm using the end of that clothes peg basket again to create a pattern. So this is all about patterns so I'm trying to use ordinary everyday items from around my house to create patterns on my page. And that is a piece of the uh, rubber mat that you put in drawers. It's to stop your things from slipping around in the drawers when you open and shut the drawers. So it makes a great stamp. It really makes a good stamp when it's done with black. This thing is a soap holder, so a suction soap holder. So you can um, stick it on your shower or on your vanity and it makes great impressions of circles. So another everyday item used to make art. looks like I'm using black gesso on it there maybe black paint I did grab a jar of black paint out of my cupboard because my gesso is very gummy and I've still got those same colors on my palette turquoise red and yellow so I've had them on the palette since this challenge began okay now I've got a paper stencil or cardboard cardstock stencil that I got from Kmart and I'm just putting a bit of pattern through there with some black paint so acrylic paint and I'm just using a little cheap stenciling brush and that looks quite nice at the moment so I've got all this extra paint still in the brush and I thought oh, I'll just down you know off dump it onto that uh, book page 
rather than just rinse it all out and that'll be the end, you know, rather than waste it. So here is some paper that I cut out some circles from the other day but didn't end up using using them so I thought well I'll, I'll stick that on there as well why not so I'm using Liquitex matte gel to glue that down and here's another bit I just like um, things with holes in them for some reason I think it looks really nice when you can see what's underneath so that is pianola paper now these pages I just was waiting for some paint to dry on something else so I went through an old book and um, I just sat there with black paint and a couple of stencils in some instances and just put marks all over uh, the pages of these books I thought um, they'd be handy for something so I tried to put different marks on each page so I'd got different different designs to use in my collaging work I really liked it, I, I enjoyed it, I um, sat them oh, I reckon it would have been an hour or so just doing all different designs Mark making on book pages, it was really. And I left them in the book while I painted them and then just tore them out to dry after I'd finished the page. Now this that I'm using now is a water-soluble crayon. It's by Montmartre. Just to get a little bit of that blue in there. And that looks like an orange version of the same crayon. Oh, and a yellow version of the same crayon. So this is a very inexpensive set of crayons. I bought them from a um, one of those cheap shops here it, where I live, and I probably would have paid about I don't know less than ten dollars for the set when I bought them. So I just used that brush with a bit of water on it to um, activate the crayon. And I thought I might add in a different blue. This is a blue that I haven't been using because it's not in, it, you know, can't be made with the colours I've got on my palette. And it, um, it looks a bit like phthalo blue to me. But one thing I like about the water-soluble crayons is you can mix colours together, blend them. And you can do that by rubbing them with your finger or you can use a wet paintbrush to do it. So far, so good. We've got a nice bright composition happening there. Uh, this is a gelato or gelati crayon. I think they're made by Stadler. I'll list it in the description box for you. So another water-soluble crayon. So it's all looking nice and bright at the moment. Here's another sheet of the book page that I made. This was just um, dots. I've got a, a stamp that's used for um, putting impressions into clay with. And I just used it with some paint on it to make a dotty pattern all over that paper. So that's the blanks, uh, the negative space of where I cut those circles out. And I'm using the Liquitex matte gel medium to glue those dots down as well as the negative space. It's funny sometimes when I'm watching, like if I have to do an extensive edit, I'll think it'll get to so far and I'll think, oh, why didn't I just leave it like that? And I don't know how many times I've asked myself that question. And I'll probably do it about four times during this video. But, um, yeah. Why didn't I just leave it? 
because it becomes very messy and overwhelming and I have to eventually calm things down a bit with some white gesso. So I've got some more dots and I've just coloured it in with one of those gelato crayons just to add another pop of colour that I haven't used before. I think that pink would have looked nicer against a really dark background but anyway let's see what happens as we go along and keep fiddling and adding and taking away So that was the black water soluble crayon a little bit more of that gelato and now I've got a damp paintbrush and I'm just activating all of that crayon work Now I heard somebody say about putting the black around the edge of the page. Now, because um, so, this is the sort of thing that you would do at the end, but they said that if you do it not at the end, but when you think you might be at the end, you'll know whether your work is finished. So I thought that's really is a good idea because you see you see it and you think yeah it looks finished or you see it and you think no it needs some more stuff on it and that's exactly what I'm doing here so I'm now trying to knock back some of that busyness out of this with some white gesso um, a lot of that water soluble crayon actually reactivates with the actually it's white paint not white gesso um, it's Joe Sonia white paint um, yeah, so it's because it's a liquid when it hits that water soluble crayon it blends with the crayon And that's the gelato again and I don't know why I put these marks here because I don't like them the ones up on the left hand side and I end, do end up covering them over this page when it's finished is so thick it's it's so it's just got so much product <laughs> on it it's unbelievable and at this point you would think, oh, she's just about finished, but no, it's nowhere near finished. Okay, so this is my next brilliant idea, is to um, cut the wing sections out of that, um, out of that butterfly there. Yeah, so I printed this on photo paper and now I'm just painting it black because I didn't like the white speckles that were on the wings. And I thought this would look really good with the colour that's on the page showing through. I've given it a bit of a splatter with some gold paint, watercolour paint. And now I'm using art glitter glue and I'll glue that on. After humming and hawing about where it was going to go for quite some time, I decided to put it over on the right hand page. Oh no, hang on. I've got tissue paper that's got gold paint gel printed onto it and I'm using that to as a backing for my butterfly wings. Okay, this is where I'm trying to decide where I want to stick it on the page. It took me ages before I got it where I wanted it to go and I've got a really big hump in the middle there so I couldn't really put it over the, the join in the pages, over the spine. So I've ended up putting it on the right hand side with one of the wings slightly off so I just ended up trimming that off. If you're enjoying my video please give me a thumbs up. Okay so I'm going to use my Stabilo pencil to draw the antennae on after trying several different pens that would not work. So I'm looking at this and I think I don't like 
that pink stuff up there and I grab some turquoise ink so this brand I uh, can't think what it is oh, Art Spectrum that's right I think that's an Australian brand so may not be available anywhere else or you might have to order it online if you wanted it uh, it's Art Spectrum Artist Ink and I shall list that in my video description box as well so I'm just creating some runs with the turquoise ink I'm letting that run down it doesn't run over the butterfly though it goes underneath it for some reason now this is the same ink I just mixed a little bit of white paint with it so doing the same over that other side checking that I'm not wrecking my previous design and then I just splatter what's left in the brush across the page All right, I think the butterfly doesn't stand out enough from the background so I've got the gesso again and I'm just dry brushing a really slight mist of gesso all around the butterfly just to lift it off the page a bit so that um, it's not competing as much with the background black stabilo pencil and I'm just circling or outlining some of those little dots here and there and I've written the number on there number 14 for pattern Uh, this is the next day and yeah I, th I thought it was just way too busy so what I've got here is that gesso again and I'm just going to go over mainly the left hand page and knock that back a bit so gesso is slightly transparent so if you put a thin coat you only you know you can still see what's underneath it so that's what I'm doing I'm trying to um, you know calm it all down a bit because it was very very busy you can still see what's underneath and I will go through and reinforce all the black that I covered up as far as outlining and the edge of the page that sort of thing because I want that to still be there I get this little stamp this is the one that I was talking about so it's for making impressions in clay but if we put some paint on it it makes a great stamp so just put on a few black dots showing great restraint there I'm not um, covering the whole page in them <laughs> as I normally would do and now redoing that edge so you can see that you can still see all the stuff that's in the background but it's not as in your face as it was before now what I'm doing here is with a damp brush I'm just activating that water soluble crayon and I thought the butterfly wings even though the goal was pretty that they didn't have enough contrast so I've got a distress crayon in the color wild honey and I've just colored in those wing bits and activating that with a little damp paintbrush and I thought I should write something on it so I wrote oh pattern me as in uh, a take on oh pardon me but I wrote pattern instead and um, I cannot write in a straight line clearly you'll see that when I take the circle away <laughs> I'm just dipping the pencil in some water so that uh, it activates the stabilo and I look and I think ah, oh, I've joined my R and my N together so I just use a little bit of paint and separate them and that's the finished painting 
Let me know in the comments what you think. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber and you've watched all of my videos. It'd be lovely to have you on board. And um, I really appreciate everyone for giving me the support and the wonderful comments, comments that I've been getting since starting my art journal. Okie dokie, I shall see you tomorrow for opposites. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. I already know what I'm going to do. So happy crafting everybody. Hugs and cheers from Australia. Hooroo.